What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another special segment. Today we're going to talk about weight training and weightlifting and resistance training and all things that sort of fall into that category. So what is weight training for essentially? So weight training basically means you're adding some form of resistance. Typically that's going to be a handheld weight or a bar or a kettlebell or other types of resistance would be machines with cables or using cams and levers those types of things and rubber tubing is going to be resistance or a weight vest or ankle weights or arm weights or those types of things anything that's going to add extra resistance so when you're moving around you're working harder than if you were just you know wearing a t-shirt and shorts so why do we do this well we do this in order to strengthen our bodies essentially um now there's different types of strength you know there's obviously you got the, your your um your olympic lifters that are lifting very very heavy weights you know over their head basically um that's you know one repetition and then you've got you know your typical weight lifting you're going to get at your uh at your gym usually they're they're lifting and putting down the weights around let's just say in a range of around 6 to 15 is typically where you're going to find types of strength and then hypertrophy training and then there's the stuff for more endurance so say like a boxer that's you know jogging with a weight suit and that it's it's not really to build a bunch of muscle or get strong it's super strong but you know you're gonna get some strength endurance so you're able to to carry a heavy or say training for to to do a fitness test for the army or some sports team or some position where you have to be physical so there's all sorts of there's a huge sort of range of why you would do this um typically we see people in the gym lifting weights putting them down and that and uh the idea is you're trying to strengthen your body. Now, what is the difference between weight training for strength and weight training for hypertrophy? Hypertrophy is the the term of essentially making your muscles grow through stimulus, rests, nutrition, um, and I guess you know repetition, uh, and then progressive progressively overloading the muscle until it becomes bigger. So. One is uh, specifically for muscle growth, as in size, like to get bigger, as in muscle hypertrophy. You want the muscles to grow to a certain size, typically to go on stage or, you know, to pose for something. It's more for aesthetics, symmetry, and those types of things, where strength is you're trying to get stronger for a, if you wanted to compete in, in an event. So, say, for example, you're doing uh power lifting so that's typically squat deadlift and bench press so you're lifting those things those exercises to be good at those exercises whereas say for something like sports um you're lifting heavy weights so that when you go to do your sport you will have more strength if you lift for hypertrophy that doesn't hypertrophy that doesn't necessarily mean you will get stronger in a functional way that would have a carryover to a sport. It doesn't necessarily mean that. So you could be doing a certain exercise, say where you're extending your legs and making your your thighs get nice and fat, and then to think that that might improve your uh, vert, so standing jump. It may or may not, but typically when you get stronger, you know, you're going to see a carryover outside of the thing. You may not even get bigger because you could be doing what's called relative strength increase. So sometimes you get stronger and also bigger. Other times sports like wrestling or boxing or anything that's a weight-oriented, weight, relative weight sport, you don't want to put on a bunch of bulk and size, but you do want to get the strength increase. So that's constantly the, the battle with uh, strength and conditioning coaches doing this stuff like boxing and wrestling and that mixed martial arts. They all got to watch their weight. They can't get too heavy. They can't get too bulky. But if you can get them stronger, then they're going to perform typically better. So that's what you see people doing at the gym is basically they're just trying to strengthen their body. Now, why are they doing what they're doing? So typically, we're just picking movements that are, I, 
I, I, I was trying to come up, come up with a way to really break this down to the most simplest form if a child is looking at it. It's like, what are they doing? So if you look at some of the movements, so say, for example, a squat or a lunge or a deadlift, meaning like you're just squatting down and then picking stuff off the, off the floor. You have a pull-up. You have a standing military press where you're pushing something over your head, a push, a row. Those are all sort of typical things you might do in a day. I mean, obviously we don't. But in order to work this muscle group, it's this motion. In order to work these muscles, it's this. It, it's a, there's a range of different things. In order to work this muscle, you flex your elbow. In order to work this back of the muscle, you extend your elbow. So we do all these exercises, and some of them are more... Uh, how do I put this? Some are more a, a compound movement, so there's multiple joints, you know, your shoulder joint, your elbow joint, a little bit of your wrist, rather than just, say, bicep is a single joint movement. It's just basically your elbow joint flexing and extending. So if you're going to go to the gym, typically you're going to you're gonna be doing some... I liked... There was a, a, a great... Um, I don't know if he was a book or a, a seminar, but it was Paul Check, C-H-E-K. Uh, it was Primal Movement Patterns. And these, it really was explained it really well that... You know, there's certain things that we do as sort of humans that if we can become good at those, to say, for example, squatting, like when we squat down to sit on the toilet, if you, you can do that, you know, that's that's a normal movement. But there is a carryover if you become good at the squat, you can get your legs bigger if you want to become hypertrophy, or you can get more explosive, more power in your in your legs if you're doing squats. So like a lot of them a lot of the exercises you see at the gym in uh your typical gym with a lot of machines like a lot of those exercises aren't going to have a carry over to a an occupation or a sport so much some of them might some might not um but those typically you're going to see in the gym on the machines those are better for hypertrophy and bodybuilding and just overall general well-being just to get a nice pump and maybe look make your muscles but some athletes are looking for that advantage or they're these kids that are trying to make a team for tryouts whether it's i used to work with a lot of ice hockey players so bantam tryouts midget tryouts midget rep trial obviously rep bantam bantam rep and then midget midget rep major midget junior b junior a major junior the a the east coast central god forbid and then up into the show or if you're heading to europe del del two uh swedish elite uh swiss league all, all sorts of stuff for these guys have to do certain movements for tests to get a, a general idea of of uh this person's overall fitness so there was a guy i worked with years ago named ray sawada so as i was going through my post uh video research i was looking for some photos of raymond and I'm just in shock now finding out that he passed away in April of 2023 this year, just a few months ago, from a heart attack while playing sports at the age of 38. He was a father, husband, and firefighter, and hockey coach, and just a great guy. So this is just shocking, horrible, horrible for me. And he was with the Nanaimo Clippers. Awesome guy. That team was full of just great, great guys. I think that was 2004, 2003, 2004, something like that. And Ray was shredded, shredded. Uh, he's about my size, 6'3", 210, 205, lean, 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 dry lean. He went to, tr I believe the draft was in Toronto that year, and he was doing his fitness test, and there was guys watching the fitness test. Like I don't know if it's called NHL Combine, but he was expected to go in the third round because of how they saw how just shredded this guy was he went in the second round he went to dallas um i don't know how many seasons he played i think he got you know not the not the longest career but uh, because of his condition that gave him a, an opportunity to go in an earlier round that gave him an opportunity to demand a higher uh a signing bonus and and salary so there are specific reasons. You know, some people can uh, do really well on a fitness test, and, you know, that's enough to sway the coach over somebody else. It's like, okay, this guy works hard. They're dedicated. So 
weight training and strength training and weightlifting and all those things. Um, one of the things that how I like to start with a lot of so okay, if I have a child athlete or youth athlete, say you know twelve, thirteen to eighteen to twenty, you know they come into me because it, typically they're going to have an injury or something that's bothering them, or they want to get bigger, stronger, faster so they can make uh, a team. Okay. Um, one of the things I really like to focus on with everybody I work with is your posture. Also, the function of all the muscles in all in our body, how our anatomy works. Um, one of the big things is with like weightlifting is the ability to squeeze a particular muscle however you want, whenever you want, and understand its function and what it works. So, so say for example, you've got your elbow. So it can go from, this is, your basic anatomy is your elbow straight by your side, palm facing forward. This is called supinated, pronated, neutral. From here, and then it goes into full elbow flexion, which is about uh, 70 degrees. I don't know. It depends how big your bicep is, I guess. Right? That's the full range of motion for the elbow, the elbow joint. You can do some rotation, uh, this, but let's just say typically this this dynamic part here of the of the, this flexing and extending is just working on this muscle here. So understanding with it, all the muscles have a certain function, you know, say the, the rear delt, how the rear delt works, how the trapezius works, the upper trapezius, the mid trapezius, the lower trapezius, elevating, um, retracting, depressing the scapula, which is the shoulder blade. Just understanding how the body works. So obviously you don't need to learn these terminologies, but you need to understand like how the pec fires, what's, what's, What's causing the chest to fire? What is it? It's the humerus coming in to the center line of the body. That's it. This is the humerus. That's why they call it the funny bone. It's this motion. That works the chest. It works on different angles for the most part. That's the function of the chest. Now we do bench press or push-ups to put weight on our hand for extra resistance. But it's if you just look at this bone coming in, it's coming to the center line of the body. That's it. That's how the chest works. So understanding how these muscles and body parts work when you're going in and trying to feel, that is, if you can understand that from the very start, which I did not understand for a while, you know, you're lifting the weights, you're trying to get get stronger because that's what do you do when you're 18 and stupid and there's nobody that knows what they're doing at the gym in 1992. There were no personal trainers back then. These guys just competed in powerlifting and bodybuilding shows. They had no clue how to train people. I mean, once in a while, you get somebody that was really educated, but there's very, 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 very few, especially in a small town in Canada. So I want you guys to understand how the anatomy works, what each exercise does, and why you might do this one over that one, those types of things. So um, the other thing, is again, is posture. Now, with posture, it, it, it can be such a huge thing with how somebody looks aesthetically. Like when you see somebody that's got, you know, this is this is a typical, and I'll talk about tonic and phasic muscles. I'll probably talk in the next one. But you, what's called a protracted scapula. You've got the internal rotation in your shoulder joint, meaning like this is typically elevated a little bit. This is internally rotated. This is... It's, is very common or you have the forward head posture because people have bad eyes <laughs> and should be wearing their glasses and then this neck issues upper back issues and the c-spine t uh, higher t-spine um we've got uh people that have horrible hamstring flexibility poor uh, hip flexor flexibility and range of motion that might cause it, it first off it looks worse if you do a blind comparison of the same body with the same sort of outfit people will choose the person with the better posture like every single time it just doesn't look right when they're standing with bad posture so with posture because if you have poor posture you're going to especially if you're young that's just gonna your body's gonna build like that and you can be looking like you're an, an old man or an old lady by the time you're in your 30s or 40s if you if you just have this typically bad posture you see in, in elderly people those are the tonic muscles firing and the phasic muscles that are too i'll get into that later but i want you guys to understand posture i want you to understand the range of motion of, of the muscles i'm going to put some links in the bottom just so you guys if you're interested in this you can get to i'll give you guys some good resources 
and then we can start to go over like the different body parts what's normal what's not normal and stuff like that so with any of these things i'm, I'm giving you it's I, I assume you've gone to the doctor and you've been cleared to exercise if you've not you've got to go do that if you have other issues and, you know, say you had an injury or a fall or an accident or a surgery or something like that, and, you know, maybe that didn't heal properly, maybe you didn't rehab it correctly, and maybe you've got muscle imbalances, compensatory adjustments you've made in your posture or how you move, and that could build and build and build on something if it's been there chronic, which is typically nine months or longer. So posture... Watch. This is something you can do. Just check out your posture. Just look in the mirror to see how you're doing with how you how you stand. I'll put a I'll put a little a sort of link. So here's I'll just quickly sort of go over. Good posture would be, if you look at me from the side, I would have my ear in line with my shoulder. I'm standing obviously. Ear in line with my shoulder, in line with your hip bone, in line with the back of your knee, in line with your ankle bone. That should all line up. If you're getting this or you get some lower back sway or any of those types of things, then you know you might need to just work on your posture. Typically, that's going to be stretching the tight ones, which would be your hamstrings, hip flexors, lower back, and then strengthening the weak ones, which is typically your, I guess you could say vastus medialis, which is the teardrop quad. I know that's not part of your, that's not so much the opposing of your hamstring. It's typically the opposing. you got to strengthen your glutes, and you got to strengthen your abs. Stretch out your lower back, stretch out your hip flexors, stretch out your hamstrings. I know I'm getting into a bit much, too much detail here, but I want you guys to understand good posture. I want you to understand anatomy and how the body works. So once I uh, figure out where I want to do this, going through the anatomy, we can uh, jump into it. So I just want to give you guys information based on the best information I can get you guys possible. Um, so you guys, when you go to the gym, you're not wasting your time like I did. You're not doing bench press every day. <laughs> We did bench press every day first. Me, Tarmit, Ravi, Clayton. Back in 92, we had no clue what we were doing. So we wasted a lot of time. Possibly could have uh, promoted bad posture for me as well with the internal rotation of my of my uh, shoulder. So let's, uh, let's do this together. Let's go over some good posture, some good uh, understand how the body moves, and then we'll build on that. Okay, so until next time for when we get into a little bit more exercise and weight training, I will catch you guys then. Peace.